Hey everybody, it's a trail over at Go Hunt. Uh, today I'm up at my local archery range here in Las Vegas, uh, getting some arrows, getting some practice in. Uh, we get a lot of questions at Go Hunt about how to get into bow hunting. Um, it's a growing sport, rightfully so. It's awesome. Uh, shooting a bow and arrow, compound bow, is actually one of my very favorite hobbies. Um, you know, I shoot every day. I use it as a stress reliever. You know, I like to bow hunt. There's an increasing demand for bow hunting. Um, for one, tags are easier to get. There's a lot of opportunity to bow hunt. As such, we're seeing more and more people getting interested in picking up a compound bow and starting to, to go bow hunting. So today I, I wanted to run you guys through just the basics of a compound bow. Kind of run you through the parts and pieces, some of the terminology that's used for a compound bow. And then secondly, I wanted to run through the actual shot sequence. So if you want to go to a local archery shop, you want to buy a bow, you want to get it set up, you want to learn to shoot that bow on your own, uh, I'm going to give you the steps that you can use to get into bow hunting. I mean, everything that you need you know, is available to you, all the information, we're going to give that to you today to get started. Um, so first and foremost, we're going to jump into the parts and pieces of a compound bow. These uh, are your limbs. So you have a top limbs and your bottom limbs. Um, you'll help people talk about a split limb versus a, a full limb. So this is a split limb bow, obviously, because you have two limbs at the top, two at the bottom, so a split limb. Uh, your riser. So the riser is the long aluminum uh, or carbon portion of the bow. Some bows have carbon risers. This is this long portion in the middle that the handle uh, is on. Um, you've got your string. So your string, you've got cables. So you've got uh, two cables here. Uh, these are your cams. So you've got a top cam and a bottom cam. Uh, this is a two cam bow. Uh, most bows at this point are dual cam bows. So two cams, you have a top and a bottom. Um, other parts and pieces that we're going to talk about, you've got a peep sight. So your peep sight is your aiming reference that sits within your string. You're going to pull that bow back and use that uh, to aim, line up your sight. So on a sight that sits inside the bow here, you've got pins. Your individual pins are your aiming points. Uh, this is a five pin bow sight, so I've got a pin for 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. Uh, this is what they call a slider sight, so it's got a dial here. I can actually move this up and down, so I can use that bottom pin to get out to some extended yardage, like a 70, 80, 90 yard range just for practice. Uh, you've got a rest on your bow, so this is the rest. It sits right here in the middle, just underneath the handle. Uh, the rest is what your arrow is going to sit on. Uh, this is a drop away arrow rest, meaning that as I pull back, that rest is going to come up to support the arrow. As I execute the shot, that rest is going to drop out of the way of the arrow as the arrow fires. Most rests at this point are drop away arrow rest. Um, and this is, a, this is what this is, is a drop away arrow rest. You can see here, I've got a couple of bars on, on my bow. This is what we call stabilizers. Uh, my bow, I shoot a front stabilizer and a back bar or a back stabilizer. What that does is gives your bow stability. So I've got some weights here at the end of mine. I've got four ounces of weight on the front. On this back bar here, I've got nine or 10 ounces on the back. What that does is it balances this bow out. So as I aim this, it's going to aim more stable because of this weight that I put out away from the riser of the bow. Uh, I've got the grip. You can see that here in the middle of the bow, which is where my hand is gonna go. A couple other terms that I would talk about when it comes to a compound bow. You hear people talk about axle to axle length. So that's this length between the middle of the axle from the top to the bottom. And those vary. So they have short axle to axle bows, which are maybe 29 or 30 inches. Those are great for compact uh, hunting situations. So if you're hunting from a ground blind or if you're hunting from a tree stand, shorter to axle axle bow is a nice uh, feature to have. A uh, little bit taller guys like myself, I actually like a longer axle to axle because the overall um, geometry of the bow fits me better. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that as I get into draw length and those kinds of things. So another term that's often talked about is brace height. Uh, the brace height of a bow is the distance between the grip here and the string. So this has got a six and a half inch brace height. Those do vary. Some bows will have a seven inch brace height and we can get into more detail uh, about what that means later on as I talk more about the bow. But those are kind of your basic parts and pieces of the bow. Uh, once again, probably the biggest feature is your cams, your limbs, your riser. And now I'm gonna jump into talking about things like draw length and draw weight. All right, so the first factor is draw length. Um, what is draw length? So draw length is the distance from the, the bottom of your grip here 
to the middle of this string as you come to full draw. So as you come to full draw, this point in the middle of the string to the grip is the draw length. So essentially what it is is the, the power stroke of the bow. It's the distance between the grip and the string at full draw. Um, for example, I've got a 30 inch draw length uh, and that's gonna vary for different people. Um, Neville shoots a 29 and a half. Uh, Brady in the office, I think his is pushing 32 inch draw length because he's got long arms. Uh, that draw length is going to be determined by your body configuration. So your height, you know, the length of your arms. Uh, when you go in to buy a new bow into a bow shop, uh, I would highly suggest you have a good idea of what your draw length is before you even go to the shop. So there's a couple of ways that you can do that. Probably the easiest is just to take your, your hand uh, and measure your wingspan. So take your hand, palm out, put it in the corner of a room or on a door jam, take a measurement to your other fingertip as you stretch your arms out and measure that distance and divide that by two and a half. That will get you pretty close. Um, it's not exact, but it will get you pretty close. Another way is to take your hand, if you can imagine you're gripping a bow, uh, put that on a corner of a door jam, have somebody measure the distance from this grip to the corner of your mouth. And that can vary a little bit depending on how your arm is extended. And we're gonna talk more about form later. But between those two methods, you should have a very general idea of what your draw length is. Like I said, this wingspan measurement method is pretty close. It's gonna get you in the ballpark and you can kind of fine tune that with your pro shop as you get there. The other factor that you need to consider in a compound bow is draw weight, which is the amount in pounds uh, as you draw back. So it's, it's that weight as you pull your bow back. Commonly that range is going to be, you know, 60 to 70 pounds. Another common range is gonna be 50 to 60 pounds. And you can adjust that draw weight uh, by moving your limb bolts in and out. So you've got a limb bolt here in the bottom and uh, in the bottom and the top. By reducing those, you know, essentially backing those out, you can reduce the draw weight on a bow. One thing I would say about draw weight is it's really easy for people, especially if you're getting into archery, uh, to feel like you have to, you know, shoot maximum poundage. So for big game hunting in the West, 70 pounds is pretty common. Uh, and I think a lot of people think they need a 70 pound bow to go, you know, hunting elk or, or mule deer. Um, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, if you can comfortably shoot 70 pounds, I think it's great. Uh, you do get that added kinetic energy and speed, which is awesome. But in saying that, you know, I shot a lot of elk with 60 pounds with no issues whatsoever. I've got great penetration and great results. Um, ultimately, what you don't want to do is get over bowed, is what they say. So you don't want to be able uh, to have so much draw weight that you can't draw your bow. Um, and it's actually relatively common. Guys get cold, they get nervous, and they can't draw their bow back because they've got too much poundage. Um, I would say if you're just getting into bow hunting or even if you've been bow hunting for a while, you know, swallow your pride if that's what it takes and shoot a bow that's comfortable for you. Uh, if that weight is 65 pounds, if that weight's 55 pounds, you know, be honest with yourself, let the ego go and shoot something that's comfortable. You want to be able to draw that bow back, anchor every single time, no matter the weather conditions and execute a shot. And like I said, you can back those limb bolts out to decrease the poundage. You just have to make sure that you do both the top and the bottom uh, equal, equally, equal distance. So that's draw length and draw weight. And like I said, the most critical factor is to get your draw length right. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that as I run through the steps on how to actually shoot a compound bow. So now I'm gonna go through the steps on how to actually shoot a bow. Um, the first thing that you need to consider is your stance. So your legs, how are you gonna stand? How are you gonna draw the bow? First and foremost, you wanna be comfortable. So you want your legs essentially relaxed. You want your feet underneath your hips. You know, a nice even distance. Uh, your front foot, so I'm a, I'm a right-handed shooter, meaning that I hold the bow in my left hand. I'm gonna draw with my right hand. Uh, that means my left leg, I want it slightly open. So if I'm shooting this way, this is my stance. Uh, and I would say your stance is something you need to work on right out of the gate. Make sure that you get that stance right every single time. Um, if you want, and you got a place to practice, especially like in your garage or at a local range, uh, take a piece of chalk, you know, trace out, um, you know, on a piece of paper or on cement, if you will, around your feet. And that'll get you in that same stance every single time. Makes it really nice. You can see up here, 
I've kind of kicked out the dirt right here. Um, this is my stance. These are the spots where my, where my feet are gonna go every single time. The next thing I wanna talk about is your grip. Uh, this is super, super important. Um, I cannot <laughs> tell you how important your grip is on the bow. I think people's first instinct when they get a bow or they first start to shoot a bow is that they wanna grab the entire grip with their, their full hand or you know their whole palm. They wanna put a death grip on that riser. Uh, that is incorrect. You don't want to do that. Uh, essentially what you want this bow to be is an extension of your arm. You want it to just sit there uh, in, your, in your hand very, very lightly. You don't want to put a lot of pressure throughout that grip. Um, what you want to do is actually open your hand. And if you can see that right there, you kind of want almost a 40 or 45 degree angle to your knuckles. So as I draw my bow, I want that angle on my knuckles. So. Nice light grip. Uh, if you can see my lifeline here on my palm, which is this arc right here that kind of sits in underneath your thumb, um, you kind of want to use that as a guideline and you don't want your grip to get over into this portion of your palm. You want to keep that grip to the inside of this lifeline, kind of on that meaty fatty part of your thumb. You just kind of want to sit that grip in just like that. And it's gonna feel weird the first few times that you do it. You're gonna feel like you can't draw your bow. You certainly can't get as much of a power stroke as if you put a death grip on that bow, but that's not how you wanna shoot it. You want that hand open, you want it relaxed, and ultimately you want your, what you want is that bow to be dead in your hand. You don't wanna put a lot of tension through your hand. Um, I see guys a lot um, draw their bow, you know, and you'll see them with their fingers skied out or with their fingers up like this. You know, if you're doing that, you're putting tension through your hand, which you don't want. So just to recap, again, you want a very soft grip, dead in your hand. Uh, you want to open that hand up. You don't want to death grip it. And you want to, you know, take the tension out of your hand. So just keep that bow nice and light in your hand. You want it as an extension of your arm. You don't want to grip the bow, if you will. So the next step is to actually knock an arrow, uh, draw your bow, and find your anchor point. So I'm going to walk you through that now. Uh, first step, knocking an arrow. Uh, there's a couple ways you can knock an arrow, but the proper way is to take the arrow, run it through your two fingers, kind of slide that forward, and then use your right hand or your left hand if you're left-handed to you know, pull that arrow back onto your string and knock it. Next step, uh, you found your stance, so you've got your stance. You know, take your release. I'm going to talk you through some different release options here in a sec, but take your release, put on your D-loop. Your D-loop here is where your release is going to go. And the next step is to find your grip. So you find your grip, get that set up, everything's ready to go. Now you're ready to actually draw your bow. Uh, as you draw your bow, you know, you want to bring your bow up level. So you want to keep your shoulder, you know, nice and level here. Um, some people talk about not skying your bow out, and a lot of times you'll see guys that are overbowed, they're drawing too much poundage. They can't actually draw their bow unless they really sky it out and get that torque to pull down into full draw. You don't want to do that. You want to have enough draw weight that you can draw it comfortably. You don't want to be overbowed. You want to keep your arm kind of level. Uh, I think it's okay if you get a little bit skied out. Everybody does. It's just the nature of drawing a bow and arrow, but you want to keep this, air, this uh, bow relatively level. Uh, one of the reasons that you want to keep your bow level as you draw it is you want to be able to acquire your target as quickly as possible. So you don't want to waste time you know, with your bow up here and then trying to find your intended target. So you know, stick your arm out, keep it relatively level. And as you come to full draw, you just want to pull back and anchor in and find your anchor point. One thing that I would like to note when you draw your bow, proper way to draw your bow, hook up your release, and then you want to bring it back, you know, with your elbow essentially kind of at level or above your shoulder. You'll see guys sometimes where they put their release on their D-loop and then they're drawing down here. So they're drawing here. What they're doing is they're using their bicep and they're pulling and then they're coming up to try to find their anchor point. Uh, it's not productive to do that. It doesn't set your shoulder or your rhomboid muscles up to execute a proper shot if you're doing so. You want to draw with this elbow a little bit high. So like I said, shoulder level, maybe even a little above. And as you come to full draw, you essentially want to rotate that rhomboid muscle back and you'll feel it engage if you do it properly and kind of rest into your anchor point. 
So the next step is finding an anchor point. So establishing an anchor point and being consistent with it every single time you shoot your bow. Your anchor point is the point at which you're gonna anchor at full draw. Um, there's three things I would like to touch on. So three points of contact, if you will, to establish and find a consistent anchor point every time you shoot. One of them is going to be the string as you come to full draw to the tip of your nose. So that's a reference point for you. The second one is the string to the corner of your mouth. So you'll feel that string right here in the corner of your mouth. The third point of contact of my anchor point is gonna be where my hand sits on my jawline. Uh, one of the reasons I like a hinge or a thumb button release is that it allows me to split my jawline and find a consistent anchor point every time. It's that third point of contact. If you look at this release, you can see this is a, a thumb button release. This is a stand shoot off. It's got that distance or that space between my index finger and my middle finger. It kind of splits my knuckles if you see that right there. And what that allows me to do is I come to full draw, I can split those two knuckles with my jawbone. And that's a reference. It's a reference that I can feel every single time I shoot an arrow. I know that I'm exactly in the spot that I need to be. So once again, anchor point, three points of contact. Tip of your nose, very light pressure to the tip of the nose. Corner of your mouth with a string and then the fill or the, your jawline on your, your hand. So people that shoot an index finger release, again, you just gotta establish that same point of contact. For me, if I shoot an index finger, it's this feeling of this top knuckle right here, kind of tucked in underneath my ear. Some people take their thumb and they stick it behind their head, and that's okay as long as they do it consistently the exact same way every time and they can feel that. For me, I'm gonna show you what that looks like uh, if I shoot an index finger release. The last couple things I want to talk about are just basic form type things. So your bow arm, your arm that you're going to hold your bow in, uh, you want to keep it straight. You don't want it locked out or hyperextended to the point that you're putting a bunch of tension in that, but you want to keep it straight. Bone on bone contact is the best way to keep your bow steady. So if you think about leaning up against a door jam, you could lean forever if you just lean up against it and you keep your bone straight. But as soon as you put that bend in it, at that point you're using muscle. Muscle fatigues, it gets shaky, and it's inconsistent. So you want to keep a nice line, nice straight line. Uh, relax, you know, not tight, but just a nice line. Uh, your shoulder, as you see here, if your draw length's proper, uh, it's going to sit nice and low in the pocket. As you draw your bow back, you kind of feel that shoulder engage and sit low here in your shoulder pocket. You don't want it up, you don't want it pushed back. You just want it nice and relaxed, sitting low in the pocket, once again with your arm straight, bow in your hand, nice relaxed grip. And as you draw your bow, you just kind of want to settle in. So as you settle in and you find your anchor point, so I talked a little bit about the front arm, your bow arm, keeping it nice and straight, relaxed. Uh, we talk a little bit about your draw arm uh, as you draw back. So as you draw back, once again, keeping that elbow kind of high, you draw back and you're going to kind of feel your rhomboids, this muscle right here behind your shoulder blade engage. As you come to full draw, you're going to set right here, find your anchor point once again with your knuckles to your face. And you want to make sure that your elbow is in line with your string. So if you had somebody stand behind you, you want to have a nice line between your elbow and your string as it travels up to the top cam. If your draw length is too long, you might be back here, which is going to be incorrect. You might find yourself leaning back. Uh, if it's too short, you may be out here, which your muscles are going to fatigue because you're using your muscles a lot to hold your bow at full draw. If your draw length is correct, as you draw this bow, it comes back and you settle into your anchor point. This part of your forearm is going to sit nice and in line with your string. So that's kind of the basics on how to get into a new bow. So we ran you through the parts and pieces, uh, things like stance, you know, some basics about form, how to draw your bow, how to find an anchor point. And that's kind of the bare bones basics of getting into a new bow. Uh, we're going to do some more uh, videos on some more advanced techniques like release and those kinds of things. Uh, if you have questions about this or anything else that I talked about today, drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer those for you. Um, like I said, archery is one of my very favorite hobbies. Uh, I love it to death. I think everybody would benefit from getting into archery. 
and bow hunting ultimately. So like I said, go to your local pro shop, take the information I gave you today, get yourself into a new bow, and, and let's go bow hunting in 2022.